I met a woman on a train. Uh, is this the same thing? Yes. Oh, I mean, yes. <laughs> yes, it is taken. I have a husband. I have, I have, I have a life, and I have things that I. I have to be there. Meryl Streep and Robert De Niro, Falling in Love, Friday at 9.30 on BBC One. And they're falling in love on BBC Two shortly in Hannah and Her Sisters, Woody Allen's witty portrait of three neurotic New York sisters who find they've too much on their plate when their relationships become as entwined as a bowl of spaghetti, something akin to the four men and women featured here on BBC One in ten minutes, all of whom know the look of love, confiding their troubles to a barman in a music and dance spectacular based on the songs of Bert Bacharach and Hal David. And that's after the news now on BBC One with Chris Lowe. The new Romanian leadership has abolished the death penalty and cuts the working week. President Iliescu gave the news in his New Year message and he promised free elections next April. And in Hong Kong, thousands call for an end to communist rule in China. Good evening. The new leadership in Romania has abolished the death penalty and formally disbanded Ceausescu's hated security police, the Securitate. In his New Year address, President Iliescu also promised economic reform and reaffirmed his commitment to multi-party democracy. Elections are planned for April. A minister in the new government told reporters that in Romania, communism is dead. New Year's night saw no street celebrations. Fear of sniper fire kept people indoors, but behind shuttered windows they toasted a new era. These are Bucharest's hidden middle classes, now able to bring in a new year with warmth and light and foreign visitors, something they were starved of in the past. Only now are they beginning to relax, but they're still bemused at the speed of change. Even now I can't believe it. It's happened. I'm, I'm so happy about what it is that I don't know if I wish anything more than that. Whatever I wished, it already happened. In a televised New Year message, President Iliescu was promising measures to help ordinary people. For peasants, an acre of land apiece to till as their own. For townspeople, a cut in the working week from six to five days. He also announced the abolition of the death penalty and the formal disbanding of the feared Securitate. The new economic measures will be immensely popular. They are steps away from the present Stalinist system. And scrapping the death penalty is intended as an explicit signal that the execution of the Ceausescu's is not a license for a wave of revenge killings. Taken together, they are tokens of intent from a government that says it wants to build a decent, democratic Romania. People gathered in their churches this new year to find that change is already affecting religion. The Catholic Church saw its first bishop in a decade. And the underground Catholic Church, the Uniates, suppressed 40 years ago, have been legalized. The pace of change is breathtaking, and it's affecting everybody and everything. Brian Hanrahan, BBC News, Bucharest. Mrs. Thatcher has sent the Soviet people a New Year message, giving their leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, special credit for the historic changes which have transformed Eastern Europe. In his New Year broadcast, President Gorbachev greeted the wave of revolutionary renewal which has swept the Eastern Bloc, that he said last year had been the hardest so far in the process of perestroika or restructuring. He warned that ethnic tensions had worsened and economic reform had been dogged by a lack of order and discipline in Soviet society. More than 10,000 people have taken part in demonstrations in Hong Kong calling for an end to communist rule in China, the colony's biggest protests for months. Organisers said the turnout was boosted by the democratic changes in Eastern Europe. This nervous colony's final countdown to the communist takeover in 1997 began in the first moments of the new decade with a pro-democracy rally. In front of Hong Kong's tame version of parliament, 
there were candles to show solidarity with the successful Romanian revolution. A flame of freedom was lit using the goddess of democracy symbol destroyed by the Peking communist authorities last June. This afternoon, 10,000 marched through Hong Kong calling for an end to what they called the Ceausescu's of China. The demonstration ended outside China's de facto embassy here, the Chinese news agency. Peking regards the pro-democracy alliance as subversive and has labelled its leaders as counter-revolutionaries. In fact, they're moderate, middle-of-the-road politicians alarmed by Peking's hardline attitude to Hong Kong's democratic hopes. Today, demonstrators copied Romanians by cutting out the heart of China's communist flag. Brian Barron, BBC News, Hong Kong. The Health Secretary, Kenneth Clark, says he's very pessimistic about achieving an early settlement of the ambulance dispute. Later this week, Mr Clark will be writing to health service district managers, telling them the government is determined to stand firm against union pressure. The Christmas and New Year celebrations were seen by some as a make or break point in the four-month dispute. The use of voluntary organisations and the army helped the period pass without serious incident, but it's also passed without any sign of a settlement. The management want to pay more to those people with paramedical skills, they want to have some local flexibility, and they've offered a very fair deal, which is at least 9% for every ambulanceman in the country now, backdated to April. Now, until there's some sign of the unions modifying their tune and turning away from public relations and going back to serious discussions, I remain pessimistic about the outcome of the dispute. That's very silly, isn't it? We've been asking the Secretary of State to meet us in order to negotiate a settlement of this dispute for over 17 weeks now, and it's been the failure of the government to release their negotiators and negotiate with us that's kept this dispute going. Mr Clark is to reiterate his position in a letter to NHS managers. The ambulance unions will discuss theirs on Thursday. They say they're planning a new initiative aimed at breaking the continuing deadlock. An oil slick covering 100 square miles is now just over 10 miles from the Moroccan coast. The slick stretches from Tangier to Safi. It comes from an abandoned Iranian tanker which is now being towed towards the Canary Islands. It's believed 70,000 tonnes of oil have been spilt, twice the amount lost from the Exxon Valdez off Alaska last year. The French environment minister has flown to Morocco with a team of experts to try to clean up the oil. Cabinet papers released today show there wasn't enough evidence to convict Guy Burgess of spying for the Soviet Union. Public records made available under the 30-year rule show the government felt it would not be able to take any action against Burgess if he came back to Britain to visit his sick mother. In fact, Burgess never returned and died in Moscow just four years later. The 30-year-old papers from the records office show the Macmillan government deeply embarrassed by the Burgess affair. Although he'd fled to Moscow after being exposed as a Soviet agent, the cabinet was warned privately that if he came back, there probably wasn't enough evidence to arrest him, far less convict him of spying. The remnants of imperialism were also causing trouble. Eleven Mau Mau detainees at the Hola camp in Kenya died after being beaten up by guards. There were states of emergency in Nyasaland and Rhodesia. The papers reveal Britain's growing frustration with its colonial role and how this led to Macmillan's great winds of change speech the following year. As the election approached, the government engineered a consumer boom and the Treasury proposed the introduction of a two-pound note. The Cabinet vetoed it, fearing it would draw attention to the falling worth of the pound. The world may have changed, Britain's role in it certainly has, and so is the value of money. But some of the issues discussed by Mr Macmillan's Cabinet are still around to preoccupy Mrs Thatcher's. The cabinet was warned that increased traffic could block city centres within five years. The solution? Parking meters. And the reunification of Germany was causing storms in diplomatic circles. With Britain, it's revealed, trying to broker a solution between the superpowers. The attempt failed, the wall was built, and that issue took 30 years to get back on the agenda. Now, football. Liverpool are still top of the first division, but their lead's been cut to two points. They were held to a draw at Nottingham Forest after Ian Rush had given them a two-goal lead in the first half. David Platt was again among the Aston Villa scorers as they closed the gap on Liverpool at Chelsea's expense. Villa also have a game in hand on the leaders, while Arsenal stay third after beating Crystal Palace 4-1. Southampton won at Charlton. In Scotland, Hearts move up to third place after a 2-0 win over Hibernian. None of the other clubs played today. 
Supporters of second division Wolverhampton Wanderers are claiming an unusual record after chartering six planes for the away match at Newcastle. They say it's the biggest airlift ever organised for an English league game and it was richly rewarded. 950 Wolves fans met at Birmingham Airport this morning. A massive New Year's Day party at £73 a head, the special fare from the Midlands to Newcastle. The Greenland branch of the supporters club was represented. The Guinness Book of Records will be formally contacted tomorrow. When it started to get up to the 900 mark, we, we really uh, couldn't believe it. We didn't know when it was going to peter out to be truthful. And in fact, even at the airport, fans were trying to get on board the aircraft. Incredible. If Santa had run out of presents by the time they'd reached the ground, Newcastle hadn't. An early penalty miss, and then in the second half, a bad defensive error made the trip worthwhile. Steve Bull, Wolves' star striker, had refound his touch. With only one goal to his credit in two months, he then scored four in the space of half an hour. Bull was on a roll as Newcastle collapsed. The atmosphere in the ground turned ugly moments later as Bull collected his hat-trick. One home fan had to be restrained from attacking the Newcastle bench in his anger and frustration. A consolation goal followed, only to be topped again by Bull. A hint on New Year's Day of a World Cup year that Bull means England business. And that's all from the newsroom tonight. Good night. <laughs>